everyone. Uh, thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, I'm Julia, I work for Engine House, and I'm their uh, business development and marketing manager. Uh, so just before we start this talk, I just wanted to share with you a few facts about space. So we now think that all stars host at least one planet. And among every star, um, there is at least one uh, like the sun. And then there's a 10 to 15 percent chance that this star like the sun hosts an Earth-like planet. Okay, you following me here? Right. So given that there are about 6 billion stars in our galaxy, and that 20% of these are like the sun, imagine how many Earth-like planets there are out there in the universe. Okay, still following me? Good. But what is even more mind-blowing? is that in a patch of sky of about the size of our moon, so roughly if you look at the sky, it's pretty much the size of your thumb, the Hubble Space Telescope found about 10,000 galaxies. So imagine how many times you can fit your thumb in the sky. It equals 10,000 galaxies, among which there is a star, like the sun, that hosts Earth-like planets. Just imagine how many Earth-like planets there are in our entire universe. It's a little bit overwhelming, a little bit crazy at the same time. So I'm sure we've all seen the movie Interstellar. How would we feel if, for one bit, we were able to create and bring to life one of those Earth-like planets? This is what we try to do with Exoplanet Explorers. So over the next 20 minutes, I will show you how we made it possible to show the unvisited and the unseen through translating scientific data into high-resolution visuals. But before we go on to that, a little bit about who we are. So we are Engine House. We are an award-winning animation studio based in Red Ruth in Cornwall, if any, anyone is familiar here. Yay! <laughs> um, and we are a proud team of uh, 3D modeler, 3D concept artist, uh, 3D animators, of course, and producers, and we've got a varied set of skills and a very diverse background. For the past four to five years, we've been doing mainly uh, animated marketing content, uh, working with agencies all around the world to provide animations. So we've worked on games, cutscenes, for the Assassin's Creed license, for example. We've also been doing TV commercials with agencies uh, up in Vietnam and Hong Kong. We've also been working with the UK book publishing industry, creating book trailers and animated book covers. Uh, but for the past couple of years, we've also been really interested in doing our own stuff, uh, which started with our first animated short movie called The Ship, which tells the story of what will happen if Cornwall, out of the blue, decided to separate itself from the rest of the UK. <laughs> And the most exciting project we've been go doing for the past uh, year has been to work on Back from the Dead Red, which is our very first animated feature film, which is currently in production. All the way down from Madrid. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> but what about VR? We've always been really interested in VR. We've uh, tried doing some training simulation, mainly low resolution and low budget. Um, it's worked quite well, but we've always knew that we could do something so much better with that technology. And this is where University of Exeter comes in, comes in uh, the whole story. Uh, we went and met with them, the astrophysicists department at the University of Exeter, and they came up with this great opportunity to have us work on the whole immersive high resolution video that would basically show exoplanet environments to people. Uh, we do need to be told twice, we just jump on the occasion to work on that project and we also partnered with We The Curious in Bristol because not only did they have a massive planetarium in which we could showcase our video but they were also uh, partnering on the whole distribution and video editing and narration side of things. So, there we were, our little team, but you put a budget <coughs> together, put a team together and off we went creating our Exoplanet Explorer project. So what did it exactly consist in? The goal was to create six scientifically accurate exoplanet environments in high resolution 360 visuals, and also to provide a unique, engaging outreach experience. So roughly, it took about six months 
costs about £20,000 and involves five project leads plus about 10 more researchers and producers from We The Curious. So this challenge was quite great for us. Here you can see there are some very <coughs> early stage uh, images. We used a software called 3ds Max to create and model all the different assets that would constitute all the different environments of the Exoplanet Explorer video. So here you can see modeling one of the planets, here creating some clouds. One of the scenes also involved one of those massive waves coming into your face, and we modeled all of that from scratch. We also chose to go for a photorealistic style, so that obviously the experience would be as credible, immersive, and realistic as possible. But as you can imagine, the road and the path wasn't smooth, and we were faced by a number of challenges, three of which I'm going to present today. So the first one is that it was the very first time that we were creating high-resolution visuals in a 360 environment. After working around with our technology, we find ourselves stuck with our in-house technology, and we really had to go the extra mile and uh, out of our comfort zone in order, in order to uh, be able to provide the high resolution that we said we would provide. So after looking around and <coughs> gathering advice from uh, other uh, creatives, we found ourselves uh, a lifesaver, which is called Octane 360, which is a software that exactly allowed us to do high resolution in 360. So that problem solved. The second challenge was to translate scientific data into visuals. Obviously, exoplanets, nobody went there. So how can we know how it looks like? How can we know what kind of movement there is in there? How do we know all of that, apart from the data that's gathered from the scientists? So we really needed to have regular feedback with them, regular conversations, to make sure that what we created visually matched the data that was scientifically accurate. So a lot of conversations and a lot of common ground needed to be found here. Second problem ticked. And the third challenge was to find a right balance between the technical and creative aspects in 360 degrees. What I mean by that is that when you put your headset on, there's movement happening all around you. You're looking up, you're looking down, looking backwards, upwards, everywhere. So because we were also doing, telling a story around all of that and giving information, we needed to provide points of focus to keep the audience engaged and to support the entire narration. So how do we work around that? Finally, we managed to overcome all those problems and we managed to deliver, six months later, this beautiful video. We created six exoplanet environments in high resolution, 360, and we are uh, an immersive content. And it looks like this. pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, 18 months later, the video was published on uh, and released out there. What were the impact? Well, the first impact is that it has now 4 million views on YouTube. It is We The Curious's most popular video on their channel. 18 months, 4 million views. It's got about five, seven, uh, 50,000 likes and 5,000 comments, some of which I would like to share with you today. But first of all, what do you think is the craziest comment we've had on this video? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody wants to give it a go? Are there aliens? Are there aliens? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Anybody else wants to give it a, a thing? Where did you get these photos from? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Right, I'm going to share some of them with you. The first one. This is the coolest video I have ever watched in my entire life so far. Ace. <laughs> I watched this in VR and oh my goodness, it was scary, cool, amazing, and it was just so good. Okay, pretty ace as well. No Man's Sky sucks from go to this. <laughs> that is amazing, I loved it. I'm studying this right now in school, it helped me a lot, thank you. Oh, yeah, cool, we helped someone with their homework. Um, there's no way we are alone in the universe, so yeah, aliens or stuff. And that the planet at 7.40 where Obi-Wan and Anakin had a fight. <laughs> <laughs> it was a truly magnificent experience. 
I would like to say from my deepest heart, thank you for making this incredible, stunning video. We went to Spain without spending time or a dollar. Yes, that's what immersion is for you. This is why I want to study the heavens. It's so amazing. The water planet caused me so much anxiety. Being in open water, not seeing the bottom, makes me so nervous, and I can't stand it. Okay. <laughs> and my little favorite. Has anyone tried watching this while high? <laughs> and you cannot believe how many times we had people high watching our video and leaving a comment afterwards. <laughs> so we had so much engagement with this video and also a lot of it, as you can see, whether it was wonder, whether it was surprise, whether it was cultural references or whether it was food for thought, we really had an emotional connection from the response we had from people. We also uh, went into schools and uh, delivered uh, the, the whole presentation and delivered some headsets for young people to experience it. So we've had a great outreach response as well from, uh, from this end. And the success it's had with school has actually enabled us to uh, create a second similar video, which is currently in the making and should be released in around June time. Uh, so keep yourself tuned for that. And also, we should be creating a game out of it, which is also a very, very exciting project. What did it mean for us at Engine House? Well, it meant a lot, because not only did we completely, ha uh, completely develop a new approach to storytelling and immersion, but we also won awards for it, which is crazy. We won the lovely, two Lovey Awards, which are uh, European awards for recognition of the best of the internet in 2018, so last year. We won two Lovey Awards for this video. Uh, we won Bronze and the People's Choice Awards, which was really great, and it really increased for us the visibility and the expertise that we can do for VR. So it was pretty cool. Um, in terms of the learnings from it, what are the magic ingredients that made this video so successful? So the first one is that the partnership, our partnership was great because it was based on passion. Passion for storytelling and beautiful visuals on our end, and passion for space on the side of our partners. So that was really great because this uh, flow of passion and this flow of excitement for the video made it really work. The second magic ingredient was ongoing specific feedback for optimal accuracy. If we needed to have all those conversations with the scientists to make sure that all what we did was really accurate scientifically. Otherwise, there was no reason for it to be, really, apart from showing beautiful things. But it, really were, uh, it was really important for us that we had that ongoing discussion and that ongoing trust between us. The third magic ingredient was industry collaboration <coughs> for technological push. What I mean by this is that if this project had never come up down our doorstep, we would have never been able to develop our expertise in VR and to push ourselves to the quality of the visuals that we've developed for this video. And it's really been a massive asset for our studio since then. And finally, the other magic, the fourth magic ingredient is that VR means that viewers really experience an emotional connection with what is presented up to them. We've seen with all the comments, people have had has, have felt many emotions while watching other, whether it was anxiety, whether it was wonder, whether it was fright, or whether it was just like amazement, they've all felt something. So if there are three different top tips that I would like you to take away from this presentation today, it's the following. The first top tip is that keep innovating in the making by going a little bit further to uh, your own skills, by going a little bit the extra miles and by going a little bit out of your comfort zone, you will make unique content and you will have the chance to work on unique opportunities. The second top tip is that immersive experiences address, addresses the, viewer, the viewer's emotions. I cannot stress this enough, but the emotional response, because the realities are shifted as soon as you put on a headset, Everything feels really real and everything feels, feels actually. So it really, really addresses the viewer's emotions and it's a great tool to keep engagement with audiences in all different sectors, which is my third top tip. High-end high VR provides limitless possibility for science and all of a sector. Imagine if we could do this for sectors like health or mental health even. How, we, how it would be if we put on a headset and show people what it's like to suffer from depression, what it's like to suffer 
from anxiety, what it's like to suffer from uh, psychosis and all that kind of thing, which is already touched on from the interactive and games industry perspective, by the way. <laughs> so VR is a really cool tool to kind of address the, the audience emotions and be able to convey something much different. If you want to give this ready to go, I've got a stand uh, in the marquee with two headsets, so feel free to come and experience the whole is a glam yours for yourself. Yeah, I love this gift. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. Keep yourself posted on our Twitter, we're Engine House VFX on Twitter, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to grab me over today. Thank you very much.